Hey everyone, the Neil Swan Song here. In this video, what I want to yeah, do is walk through here. strategies for optimizing Next DPS target. in A1 yeah, get... Savage, targeted primarily towards people who have the fight on farm, so I'm not going to discuss core mechanics or responsibilities for the fight, I'm just going to go through little tips and tricks. So to begin with, you can see that I walk through my full perfect Dragoon opener, as I've discussed it in my other video, but there is one noticeable difference which is, as you can see here, I'm actually going to conserve Dragonfire Dive, which I would normally be pushing out at this point. And that's so that I can land it on the first set of adds, as we'll see and as I'll expand upon in just a minute. Now that I'm past my opener, we're looking at fairly striking dummy-like conditions. In terms of the boss, he's just sitting here, he does pivot around a little bit, which means that landing positionals is going to be crucial, but I'm not doing anything too fancy in terms of cooldown management. Now, this is a really important part of the fight when it comes to maximizing DPS. The first set of adds is about to spawn, and what I do is hold off on Gear Skogel use for a couple seconds, wait until our healer tags the adds, then push out Gear Skogel from the flank, so it hits the boss in both adds, and immediately push out Dragon Fire Dive. And you'll notice that although I'm targeting the oppressor with Dragon Fire Dive, it does also hit both of those adds. So this, I want to argue, is not an overly inflationary strategy in terms of boosting your DPS. You do want those adds dead as quickly as possible. It is a legitimate contribution to the fight with abilities that you would be using anyhow. Now for this point in the fight, one small trick that I'm going to use to push out a little bit of extra DPS is, even though I'm staying on the original oppressor in the long term, I'm going to manipulate Gear Skogel here. You see that the 0.5 appears. I tap target over and Gear Skogel while still within range of the original oppressor. Oh, so close. Which also happens to be when Blood for Blood is up, which is nice. Now, the adds are going to pop up in a second, and this is a really essential juncture in the fight. I actually save off on full thrust just a hair here so that I can get it on the ad because my goal is to have this thing dead before the resin goes out. And that's going to help me tremendously to maintain my uptime against the boss, which is really nice if I can get away with it. That said, if you have to hold off and be a little bit more conservative, if you do have to kill that ad after the resin goes out, uh, then you'll want to be a team player. It is a pretty tight burst DPS check to get it down before resin. So it's worth pointing out here that I am going to go ahead and pop Blood for Blood at this juncture in the fight. What I find is that that individual Blood for Blood should last just long enough to cover the entire period of time before the oppressor jumps. So it does sync up pretty nicely where I'm basically pushing out Blood for Blood as often as I can, which is true in general for this fight. There aren't a lot of cases in which we'll be holding off on cooldown use, fortunately. Is up. Hey. Now at this point in the fight, you'll see that Battle Litany is available. I'm holding off a second here, but you see me strafe a little bit to try and make sure that it hits more of the group. And then I'm continuing pushing out maximum DPS on the oppressor, of course. So we'll see another set of adds here in a second. And you it times out like pretty that. nicely where I'm using Life Surge on the ad. Again, I'm trying to get it down before the resin, which plays substantially into my DPS maximization. One other observation that's worth making here, uh, one way that you can improve your DPS substantially is kind of outside of your control, which is your group's collective DPS. Uh, in this case, we push our DPS hard enough to kill the 0.5 oppressor before it reaches its second jump, before both of them hop away for that second time. So we accomplished this at about 7,200 
collective DPS. And of course, if yeah, your group point. can't do that, then your numbers are going to look less impressive overall, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing anything wrong individually. Yeah, we got about five seconds. And there's the kill. Oh, nice. My DPS okay. for this clear oh, was it. 1320. Yeah. It was conducted at Ooh. item level 205 yeah. with an antiquated reenact item level yeah. 200 spear. I hope that you found this video helpful. I'm also going to link to our group's casting. warriors perspective yeah, of the fight the in addition so, to Miztech's A1S guide like for those who are less familiar with the fight as a whole. The, hopefully I'll have so a video up like, that is similar to this oh, one for A2S in the near future. Thanks for watching. Right side, A1.